every aspect of the horse industry leads to the slaughterhouse. And that's what we're focusing on. And how do we get rid of horse slaughter? Today we're going to have a big focus on the wild horse issue, which has really been hot. And changes are being made, and we want to make sure that the right changes get made so that we don't have this travesty that we have today in this country. And so we're going to have um, the first part of, of today is going to be dedicated to the wild horse and burrow herds of North America. And we're going to start with a very, very special clip from a film called Running Wild, The Life of Dayton O. Hyde. And I'm, we're very honored to have Susan Watt here, who I had the honor of meeting the year that I founded Equine Advocates back in 1996. I had the privilege of, of visiting the sanctuary in South Dakota, and it's quite magnificent. Dayton Hyde is a true American icon. Um, he's, he's an amazing man, and it's wonderful that his life has been documented on film. And just to introduce this opening clip, I'd like to introduce the filmmaker, uh, Suzanne Mitchell, who is going to introduce the clip to us. Suzanne. Hey, thank you. Hi. So, you know, I, I got to this place of making this film. Uh, back in 1992, I was a television producer, and I was working on a special for People magazine. They were going to celebrate their 20th anniversary mm -hmm. in uh, a television two-hour special for ABC. And, uh, you know, the first thing I had to do was read 20 years of People magazine. And by the third celebrity divorce, I was ready to pull on my brain <laughs> And, you know, I was looking for those real people stories that they put in the magazine, and I saw this tiny little article about Dayton O'Hyde and what he had done in 1988 to start the Black Hills Wild Horse Sanctuary. Now this was 1992, so he was about five years into it, living out there alone, and I lobbied the executive producers of the program to allow me to do this as one of the many stories in this two-hour special. And for no other reason than I wanted to go see wild horses. I was an East Coast New Yorker who grew up on Long Island, like most young girls, loved horses, but wild horses and a cowboy? And the executive producer said, sure, you can go out there and do it. You know, cut the piece down to a minute and a half, and we'll bump into a commercial break with it. And I was like, that's fine. You know, that's cool. I'll still get to go. And then I made Dayton Hunt. And in order to create that minute and a half, we shot for several days out at the sanctuary. And Dayton was out there alone. It was before Susan Watt joined him. And I fell in love with his storytelling. I fell in love with what he had created out there, but more importantly, I realized that he had spent his life leading up to creating this very dramatic, vibrant sanctuary. And I thought that, wow, how am I ever going to tell that in a minute and a half? So I tucked it in the back of my brain, and as we pulled out of the sanctuary, and I had seen a lot of stories in my lifetime, and I've met a lot of people, I was sobbing. Because I felt like I met a hero, a real American hero. And my cameraman looked at me and he said, you know, we should do a film. In 2002, shortly after September 11th, and after meeting Dayton again in 1996, after Susan Watt had gone out there, I realized it was time to start. You know, I felt like Dayton started the sanctuary on credit cards when he was in his 60s. And I could certainly start a film on my credit cards, my home equity loan, and all the money that I begged and borrowed and begged for to finish this film. So that was 2002. We finished the film in late 2012. We were accepted into the Slam Dance Film Festival, which premieres at the same time as Sundance. We were picked up for distribution by Screen Media Films. We released theatrically in October. My dream came true, but more importantly, my dream was not to walk on red carpets, but really to inspire a new generation of people to do exactly what Dayton Hyde is still doing at 89 years old. Um, and he would be here today, except he's mending fences. <laughs> literally, literally mending fences. And, um, but we're so fortunate to have Susan here, because Susan is really, really uh, the brains and the brawn right now behind bringing that sanctuary into the next generation. It just celebrated when the film was released, its 25th anniversary, it's now in its 26th year. We have information in the back. The film is available on DVD. I have some with me. Come see me afterwards. It's on Netflix if you are on Netflix. And it's also available on video on demand. What we decided to do, Susan and I, 
was to show just an eight minute clip of the film. And what I'm doing, um, and there's so much more. It's, you know, it's really the story of a man and his dream and his passion to save the American West, one animal at a time, one piece of land at a time. And so we tell his life story leading up to the sanctuary, and the sanctuary and the wild horse imagery is woven throughout this hour and a half film. We're showing you just the first eight minutes today, but I encourage you all to, to, uh, to watch the full length film. And thank you so much, and certainly thank you. Yeah. And everybody here who does what they do.